from the depths instant tutorial welcome to jimadesm and we're back into from the depth we are here to talk about cram cannons and more specifically some advanced tips that you should start using if you aren't already one of these things is of course 3d cram tetris now 3d cram tetris has been covered before and will be covered in an instant tutorial that are released after this one. In any case, in this video we will not be talking about 3D Cram Tetris. There are other tips that are equally important that you should know about to make good Cram Cannon turrets. To begin with, the Cram components are not taking any EMP damage, except the Laser Targeter. The Laser Targeter can be destroyed by EMP, but the rest of the components cannot be destroyed with EMP. They do, however, go do a pretty good job to deliver EMP to other sensible or sensitive components. So it can be a good idea to, inside your turret, make sure that the weapons computer, the local weapon controller, is insulated from the EMP surges with surrounding it with rubber. If you don't do this, your entire cram turret can be destroyed by a EMP surge hitting this. Now it is uh, insulated as we can see here. We hit it with an EMP surge and the EMP surge goes down onto the body on the platform and does not touch this. If we instead surround it with some heavy armor to protect it or cram components, um, it will not be so lucky. We could see there that it now gets destroyed, even though we had an integrated surge protector into this turret to defend ourselves with. And this is also a very good thing to do. If you have some free spaces when you do your cram tetris, put one surge protector or something in there, in the near top of the turret, and uh, it might actually save the entire turret from heavy EMB blasts. Another thing that you unfortunately has to stop use if you are building with 3D Tetris, you cannot use the reconfigure layout thing anymore. Because if you change these values here, your Tetris will be totally messed up. We'll cover this a little bit more when we talk about 3D Tetris, but I just want to try and help you get out of using this. I know it's a handy feature, but if you want to use this, you can only use pretty inefficient 2D Tetris or 2D layering, um, which works, but if you want to make the cannons really material efficient, you want to do the other way, and then you can't use it, because if you use it, you literally destroy this hard work. It will take ages to fix this. Like this, this, this cannon is now suddenly a wreck. So sorry, when you want to change your turrets, if you're going to build advanced cannons, just place blocks. Only change out blocks in order to change the loadout of the turret. Do not use the sliders. The next little thing we will talk about is, well, payload capacity. Basically, the amount of pellets that are fired in a shot. I usually describe cram cannons with a little, well, allegory. That's basically a cram cannon shugs out a bucket. We can fill this bucket with uh, pellets. And we need packers to fill the buckets with the pellets. And the speed of filling the pellets is more important the amount of connections to the pellets. Because the pellets sources are in infinite. So the most important thing is that we want connections. And how many pellets can we pack in there? Well, we can pack the amount of pellets that we have payload compactors. Payload compactors makes the packers pack the pellets more compact. So the more payload compactors we have, the more pellets we can pack into the bucket. Makes a lot of sense. So the more connections to pellets with uh, packers we have, the faster we can pack it. And the more connections to payload compactors, the more compact we can pack the buckets. And thus getting out more pellets. Now, there is a little thing. No matter how few payload compactors you have, like in this example, in this tiny little tiny, tiny, tiny little cannon, like the smallest one you can make basically, it has 250. That sounds a lot. And yes, that is the smallest size of bucket you can have for 1000 millimeters. Well, the smallest you can have. 
The inherent capacity will increase if we increase the gauge. So there is a minimum amount of pellets that is um, available to fit in a bucket. And if you add some uh, of these payload compactors, you can see now it can pack 262. Very nice. So if we want to fire 500 pellets, well, we need this many single connections to payload compactors. And this now fires 500. This looks like it's very much larger. Well, to get around with this, we can basically use the inherent capacity of the bucket of the cram cannon. So if we have two of these, one and two, we also have 500. So by having more firing pieces, thus more barrels, we can save a lot of materials that would have gone to making the capacity larger. So by having more barrels, we can skip spending a lot of resources on having a lot of payload compactors and uh, packers to those compactors. So to explain that very quickly, Having more barrels gives you free capacity, free of charge, completely free capacity. Just have more barrels, just have more firing pieces and the firing pieces comes with free capacity. Very nice, use more barrels. If a railgun shoots straight through your cram cannon and destroys a firing piece, you still have the other firing piece. And your cannon isn't completely useless, it's only half useless and that's pretty useful. So redundancy is king as everything in From the Depth and that's true with cram cannons as well. Have not one big mega cram cannon, use several smaller ones and for those smaller cannons use several barrels. Not that you should make tiny um, cram cannons, it's, it's good to make large cram cannons but I'm thinking like a huge, one huge mega cram cannon isn't as good as like the same amount of firepower divided up by four cannons that has four barrels each. That's super redundant. Mmm, firing a 200 millimeter cannon by hand, very fun. All right, so the next tip, what is that about? Well, it is another reason to use multiple barrels actually. Another reason, could you imagine, there are more. So uh, when we fire, after we fired, we pack the cannon. That's our reloading time how fast we can pack the cannon. With a little caveat, there is another parameter that decides reload time. And that's not only the packing speed, how fast you can pack it. If you look like this, far this thing, boom, and you can see preparing packers, six seconds. And this depends on the millimeter, but for 2000 millimeter, it's six seconds, but basically six seconds is completely used for preparing the packers. It's not even packing during that time. So your reload time for a 2000 millimeter cannon is six seconds plus whatever time it takes for you to pack it. So if we go in here, I can just show you with a minimum size, thousand millimeters. So as you can see, we fire this shell now we need to wait for 10 seconds and three of those seconds is just preparing the packers. And as you might imagine, those six seconds that is for 2000 millimeter cannon will just be six seconds. So six seconds for a 32 second reload time isn't a huge deal, but three seconds for a nine second reload time is a huge deal. This basically means that From the Depth punishes short reload times for cram cannons. Longer reload time for cram cannons are inherently just more efficient. In conclusion, long reload times is better in terms of efficiency. And of course, if you have long reload times, it is a really big risk that you miss your shots. Someone has actually calculated the optimal reload time for cram cannons or rather the minimum reload time for cram cannons that is still efficient.
And for 2000 millimeters, this is 23.32 seconds. And for 1000 millimeter cannons, it's 9.12 seconds. And there is of course no harm in having longer reload times, especially if you spread them out over more barrels, so you still can get uh, shots out now and then. Now we need to talk about another thing you should do for your cram cannons to get better efficiency. And you probably do this already, use fuses, and you should use fuses. However, you shouldn't use multiple fuses. We can see that if we use like almost all fuses, our shell health is reduced to 50%, and this is absolutely not acceptable. And dependent on the case, you should use different types of fuses. However, kinetic cannons is great. And if you wonder what a kinetic cannon is, well, it's only having like hardener pellets on it. The hardener pellets are slightly cheaper, and if you like kinetic shots like railguns and uh, sabots and armor piercing, do try some cram cannons. Do try some cram cannons, because the cram cannons actually do a lot of damage. And if you have pretty small cannons, or like not, not like small, but maybe this size, only having kinetic hardener pellets and having no fuse whatsoever can deal a lot of deep damage. It will probably not go through the enemy ship, but it will go pretty deep, and that can be a really valuable thing. Uh, the more of these you have, the more hardener pellets you have, the, the, the better um, health the shell will have, so it will be harder for land systems to take it down. You can see the shell health uh, at this stage is uh, well over 2000, and if we change this to cram, we can see the, the shell health is uh, significantly lower. So the health depends on what type of uh, pellets you have, and the hardener pellets give your shell uh, most of the health. When you make a cram cannon, you can of course make it only hardener pellet, but if you want some kind of payload on there, you should have the payloads be on a lower value than a hardener pellet weight. Because if your enemy uses a lot of lamb systems, if you don't have a good shell health, it will be easier to take out. So even if you may not intend to do deep penetration, you might want to spend some extra value, some extra resources on having a lot of hardener weight. Having like medium size cram cannons like this we're sitting on here with only hardener pellets can be really good to deal some deep damage. But if you have a large cannon that just shoots through, you can select the hollow point tip. And if you do that, the shell health will not be affected. So it will not be easier to take out with lambs and the damage will spread out as a uh, well thump damage. It will do damage to the surface and can do really big craters and delete entire superstructures if you're lucky. It can even delete enemy turrets if you have enough damage in there. But you can see the shell health is now 3000 and without the hollow point tip also 3000. Very nice. And just to compare, if this was an only EMP um, loaded shot, so only EMP pellets in here, then the shell health is only 900. So you can, you can kind of see why we want some hardener pellets to not make our shots get zapped out of the sky. To be able to deal damage even though we miss the target. So if we have a penetration depth fuse like this one instead, we can say I want to explode six meters inside of the target, basically what we set up. Uh, if we do this, it will not explode if we miss the target. But with the time from launch, it will explode just beside the target. And that can be absolutely great. Because one thing we can do is in the cram settings, we can set uh, if we have a uh, if we have a frag shot on there, I don't know if this one has, yes, it has some frag. We can set the fragmentation cone angle. If it's really narrow, we do a lot of damage in a small narrow angle, but the total damage will actually be lower. So when we have a time from launch fuse, we can use this sweet wide angles and any, like they should deal some damage if we have a fragmentation angle that's like 135. 180 might be a little bit overkill, but that might work too. But having a wider angle 
and using the time fuse also all, almost makes it so that the damage you deal will be almost guaranteed. Each cram shot you fire will do some damage and it doesn't matter if it's a complete miss, if it shoots, you know, five meter beside the target, it explodes in the air, the frag fragments will go and do some damage anyways. So let me show you a little example turret. Inside of here we have a laser targeter for this side. It is a two barrel turret because of redundancy. This side only uses, as we can see inside of here, it only has hollow point. This entire side of the cannon is only connected up to hardener pellets. So it is a hollow point shot. The other side uses a mix and it uses time from launch. And if you go down here, you can see we have a laser targeter with a little offset. So this should de explode afterwards. And uh, inside of there, we can see we have wide fragmentation angle. Pretty nice. So we have these shots incoming here. The first one is probably the uh, hollow point. And the second one, ah, there we can see. And uh, what I talked about before too, we can do like this. We can have the fragmentation angle be kind of ish narrow and just spray them in the face with some fragmentations. So we do like this and you can see boof, it just went off there and damaged loads of lock. Very good for soft targets. So a little ending notes you should definitely know if you didn't know already. So here we have a kinetic cram cannon. We fire it, goes straight through, very beautiful. The speed of the shell doesn't matter for the damage we do. So we can see we dealt, uh, we dealt kind of a lot of damage there. Let's have like a lot of uh, suppressor barrels. And now we have a shell speed of uh, 32 <laughs> meters per second. Uh, and that basically doesn't matter. Now, it kind of doesn't go so far because it goes down into an angle like this, but you can see uh, the damage the shell does is the same. So for APS, for example, the shell speed matters a lot, but for cram cannons, the shell speeds in terms of damage doesn't matter. Also, uh, if we do like this, let's say we have a little, uh, high, let's say we have some high explosive to this thing. And we make sure we do not have any fuse. So if you fire again, you can see boom, the shell comes here and it detonates on the surface of the target. Why does this happen? Well, it's because we didn't have any fuses and the APS shells automatically detonate when they run out of uh, like armor penetrating capabilities. But cram cannons doesn't do this. So for example, if we want to deal proper damage, we actually need a fuse. Otherwise, it will uh, prematurely detonate the shell. And now we have a 10 meter fuse and now it detonated there instead. There is an exception here and that's of course if you use a hollow point shell. So right now this is a hollow point shell, mostly using hardened pellets and a little bit of frag. Let's have a little bit of frag, a little bit of EMP and stuff like that. It doesn't matter that we don't have any penetration depth fuse and it doesn't destroy the hollow point capability of the shell. It will still detonate on the surface and uh, deal its payload. So you can have a hollow point shell that is combined with some EMP, some frag or some uh, high explosive too. So with these tips, I hope that you will be building better cram cannons. Thanks a lot for watching. This is your host, Jim Adesim. We are signing out. Subscribe and like the video. Okay.